Hello guys, so we're going to be talking about omega-3 in terms of why does your body need omega-3 and the benefits of fish oils. Now, if you want a more summarized video of fish oils, why don't you check out my presentation on the benefits of fish oils. So why do we need omega-3? Well, omega-3 is what is classed as essential fatty acids. You know, these are the building blocks for the cell membranes in your body. So your organs such as your brain, your eyes, your heart, they need omega-3 to function. Because what omega-3 does, it lines the cell membranes and allows for the normal growth and development. And it does other functions such as reducing inflammation, for instance, which we'll talk about in more detail. So for example, I've got this. Um, this is a bottle of omega-3. It's got 2,000 milligrams of fish oil. I've only just started taking this two weeks ago. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids contains two elements, so one is called EPA, don't ask me to pronounce that, it's all on the screen, and the other element is called DHA. Now EPA and DHA are found in fish oils. Then again you've got another group of omega-3 which are found in your plant oils and they're called ALA, also known as alpha linolenic acid. Now alpha linolenic acid is also a good source of omega-3 However, it's not as much as a good source as your EPA and DHA found in fish oils. Now, I know that everyone does not eat fish, so if you don't eat fish, then your plant oils is an alternative source, because your ALA can also be converted into the EPA and DHA. However, only a small amount of ALA is converted onto EPA and DHA, which is why your fish oils are the best source of omega-3. Now, in terms of fish oils, you're asking, what are the types of fish that I can eat? That contains good sources of omega-3. So you have to think of fish like tuna, mackerel, swordfish, herring, lake trout, anchovies and other types of fish which I haven't mentioned and in terms of plant oils you can have flaxseed, flaxseed oil, leafy vegetables, vegetable oil, canola oil, hemp seed, chia seed, walnut and various types of plant oils where you can get your omega-3. You might also find omega-3 in fortified products such as eggs for example. So let me just look at this product if it contains fish oil or omega-3 more like. So this is Cheerios. Does it contain omega-3? Nope. So this does not contain omega-3. Now let me look at my milk which I bought the other day. Banana flavored milk. Does it contain omega-3? No. This does not contain omega-3. So that tells me that all these specific food sources, like just like I mentioned, your fish oils and your plant oils really contain omega-3. I mean, in terms of fish, how much fish do I how much fish do I need to eat to get a good amount of omega-3? I mean there's no specified amount, but it's recommended that you should eat at least two portions of fish a week to get your good sources of omega-3. And if you don't like eating fish, you know your option is to take fish oil supplements. Earlier today, um, I did make some sardines which contains omega-3 as it tells you there high in omega-3 um, what did I make I made some fried egg which is quite nice actually and if you look at the back it tells you 1.38 grams of EPA and DHA in 120 grams no sorry in 100 grams of um, sardines and this is 120 20 grams so how much EPA and DHA do I need well on average, you probably will need to consume 500 milligrams of both EPA and DHA in roughly one gram of fish oil. The recommended amount for omega-3 is 1.1 gram for women, while men should be taking 1.6 gram worth of omega-3. We normally advise not to take more than three grams a day because omega-3 does have side effects. However, some people are on prescription dose of omega-3. Yeah, that's right, omega-3 fatty acids can actually come as a prescription or a supplement. Now for those with medical problems, such as heart problems, which will come to later, you might find that some people are actually taking prescription dose of omega-3, which can actually be up to four grams a day. Also, to increase the absorption of omega-3, you should also take it with meals rather than an empty stomach. Again, as I mentioned, omega-3 has side effects, so it's better if you consume it with meals, especially meals that contain fat, as I showed you earlier. Now let's talk about the health benefits of omega-3. So I'm going to refer specifically to fish oils because as I mentioned, they are the best sources of omega-3. Then you can also take plant oils if you do not eat fish or if you're a vegetarian. Um, looking at this bottle, it contains 660 milligrams of EPA 
and 440 milligrams of DHA. I mean, you only need to take 500 milligrams of both EPA and DHA. I've been taking this for two weeks, so I'm going to monitor and see what the actual benefits are. But I can tell you now that I actually feel much alert, much stronger, and happier. <laughs> Right, so head of benefits of omega-3. I would like to start from the top to the bottom. As I mentioned earlier, omega-3 is very good for reducing inflammation. It has been shown that omega-3 can help with hair loss and it can also help your hair grow thicker. So if you see me in the next three months with a big massive afro, you know that it's due to me taking fish oils, either in the form of supplements or either as a food form. So omega-3 helps with hair loss and it helps with hair growth as well. Omega-3 is very good for the brain. Like I mentioned earlier, omega-3 lines the cell membranes of the brain, so it's very good for function. Omega-3 helps with brain fog, you know, it helps with memory loss, and omega-3 helps with cognitive decline with age. So it's worth seeing if omega-3 actually helps with people who've got dementia or Alzheimer's disease. I mean, it's also what's seen for me, with my maths calculations, that's to get quicker and much better as well. So now we've talked about the hair, we've talked about the brain, let's talk about the eyes. So omega-3 is very good for good eyesight. Omega-3 has been shown to help in age-related macular degeneration. Macular degeneration is basically the loss of central vision, and studies have shown that omega-3 slows down that process. Omega-3 is also good for a condition called dry eye syndrome, where your eyes are so dry, they might feel gritty, or you might have excessive watering of the eye. Omega-3 also helps to slow down and perhaps prevent a condition called glaucoma, which is basically when your eye pressures are so high that it can cause reduced vision as well. Omega-3 has also been shown to be useful in pregnant mothers because in babies it's very important for the normal growth and development of the eye. It has been shown that mothers who had omega-3 in the diet, you know, had babies who had better and sharper vision than mothers who probably did not have omega-3 in the diet. So if we look at the heart, omega-3 helps to reduce the risk of heart disease. So omega-3 has shown to be very useful in reducing the amount of high triglyceride levels in the blood. Now, what's triglyceride? Triglyceride is a fatty molecule that's often found in high carbohydrate foods and foods with high sugar content. And what triglycerides do is when they go into the blood, they basically block the blood vessel. In addition to high cholesterol, which can cause plaques, these high triglyceride levels stop the blood flow from going through the blood vessels into the heart. Now, this leads to risk of conditions like heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, and can cause obesity as well, where basically you have lots of fat deposition in the hips. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you have high triglyceride levels, it's most likely your doctor might give you some prescription omega-3 fatty acids, which might come as four grams. You can still take your over-the-counter fish oil supplements or natural food sources. However, you might need 10 times the amount of fish oil supplements that would equal the dose of the prescription medication being given for omega-3. Omega-3 has also shown to be useful in raising the levels of good cholesterol in the blood, known as HDL cholesterol. You've got good cholesterol and you've got bad cholesterol. And good cholesterol is good because, again, that's what prevents you from having your heart attacks, your diabetes and your strokes. So what you want is good cholesterol in your blood and less of the bad cholesterol. Those days, no evidence that omega-3 can reduce the levels of bad cholesterol in your blood. However, there are other ways you can reduce bad cholesterol in your blood, which is through diet and exercise. So in terms of the liver, so... Just to let you know your liver is on your right side because a lot of people think their liver is on the left. Now what omega-3 does for the liver, it reduces the amount of fat in your liver, especially in those people with what we call fatty liver disease. Now fatty liver disease again puts you at risk of obesity, diabetes and stroke. So if you can reduce the amount of fat in your liver, that results in a healthy liver. Also I forgot to mention, Fatty liver, over a number of time, can also lead to a risk of what we call liver cirrhosis, where basically your liver is so hard and fibrous that your liver stops functioning, and you can have symptoms such as jaundice, loss of appetite, and weight loss. As I mentioned, omega-3 is good for inflammation. So omega-3 helps to reduce joint pains and swelling, so it would be useful in conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, for instance. Omega-3 would also be useful in autoimmune conditions where there's an inflammatory process, such as your Crohn's, your ulcerative colitis, and lupus, and other inflammatory conditions. Omega-3 is good for your skin. Omega-3 helps with dry skin, it makes your skin feel soft and supple. It's also useful for conditions such as eczema and psoriasis. And it has been shown that omega-3 might also help people with acne. 
Omega-3 is very useful for those with high blood pressure. Studies have shown that omega-3 can actually reduce your blood pressure slightly in those with high blood pressure. And if you're already taking high blood pressure medication, taking omega-3 coupled with high blood pressure medication is actually more effective than taking blood pressure tablets on its own. Now, omega-3 is very important for your mood. Like I said, I feel a bit happier since I've been taking omega-3. I was wondering, <laughs> why am I feeling happy? And then I figured, could be the omega-3, or could it be the weather is getting brighter? Who knows? However, omega-3 has been shown to reduce depression and anxiety. Um, basically, omega there's a chemical in the brain called serotonin levels, which can be quite low. So omega-3 has been shown to adjust the levels of serotonin in the brain. In some cases, a lot of people find that if they're taking fish oils or alternative omega-3 supplements, they actually might not need to go on antidepressants. So omega-3 is good in that regard. Omega-3 has shown to be also useful in probably other psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia, um, depressive element of bipolar disorder for example, because of bipolar disorder you've got depression and mania, but you have to be careful. Like I said, you know, omega-3 is good in making you feel happy, but if you go through a manic episode, it might not be a good idea to be taking fish oils for instance. However, if you're going through a low phase of bipolar disorder where basically you're depressed, then it's quite important that omega-3 is part of your diet. And omega-3 has also shown to be useful in preventing sudden death, especially in those who've had underlying heart conditions such as previous heart attack, or they have an abnormal rhythm. Studies have shown that omega-3 had better rates of reducing sudden death than in those with heart problems who did not take omega-3. Omega-3 thins the blood. So it's also useful in reducing the risk of having blood clots. The blood clots can happen when your platelets clump together and it can happen in setting conditions where basically you might be predisposed to having blood clots if you've been on a long pain journey or if there is a family history of blood clots for instance or if you just had a recent surgery or operation where basically you're bed bound or immobile for quite a while it might be a good idea to take omega-3. Now, in terms of fish oils and cancers, omega-3 has shown to possibly reduce cancers and even treat cancers. Now, some scientists did some research in the lab where basically they looked at bowel cancer cells and omega-3 were shown in the lab to reduce the growth of bowel cancer cells. Omega-3 is currently being studied in mice to show if there is an effect on bowel cancer in mice as well. However, there is no harm in taking omega-3 because it was shown to reduce bowel cancers breast cancers, and even prostate cancer. Though some studies have shown that omega-3 might increase the risk of certain types of aggressive prostate cancer, so it's normally worth consulting with your doctor if there's a family history of prostate cancer as to whether you should be taking omega-3. Now I've talked about, you know, omega-3 and pregnancy. So if you, especially with fish oils, if you're going to be taking certain types of fish oils in pregnancy, it's quite important that you consult with your doctor because Fish on its own, like natural fish sources such as mackerel, sawfish, tarfish, or shark, you know, might have high levels of mercury and toxins, which might again be toxic to the baby. So we normally advise, you know, not to take those sources of fish, and it might be a safer idea to take fish oil supplements, because fish oil supplements have been purified of the high levels of mercury and the toxins. So always read a pack, always look at the ingredients and see what they contain. You know, if they contain any levels of mercury, they do not take it at all. I cannot specifically recommend any brand of omega-3. This is just something I found in my cupboard. It does not mean that I'm, I'm advertising for you to take this. Now, as I mentioned earlier, omega-3 is good for pregnancy. It helps in the development of the baby. You know, it's good for vision. It has also been shown to reduce the risk of autism and ADHD as well. So if you take in omega-3 from pregnancy, maybe your child might have less chance of having autism and ADHD However, you have to bear in mind that with those conditions, there is environmental and genetic factors at play. So we cannot prove exclusively that omega-3 would prevent your child from having ADHD or autism, but there is no harm in taking omega-3. It has been shown that omega-3 in pregnancy is quite good for developing the intelligence of babies as well. If you are on certain other types of medications, you should consult with your doctor before taking omega-3 because omega-3 can thin the blood. So if you're taking medications such as aspirin or warfarin, this can lead to increased risk of bleeding. And so make sure you speak to your doctor, don't just go to the cupboard like I've done and take omega-3. I'm not taking any medication at all. Um, in terms of those, I'm taking quite high dose of two grams of fish oil. Like I mentioned earlier, you can actually take one gram of fish oil a day. 
However, after a few months, I plan to step down to one gram of fish oil. As I mentioned, omega-3 can thin the blood. It is good for preventing blood clots. But in terms of side effects, omega-3 can cause a fishy taste. It can cause increased risk of bleeding, such as nosebleeds or gum bleeds. It can cause indigestion, heartburn, stomach upset, nausea. However, it does not cause any serious side effects as such. And if you take omega-3 with foods, like I mentioned earlier, you should be pretty safe to take omega-3. Look, omega-3 has lots of benefits. I might have missed out a few of the health benefits. And if you know any of the extra health benefits, feel free to drop a comment below. And if you're worried about taking omega-3, like I mentioned, consult with your doctor. Hope you enjoyed my video. And for more health topics similar to this, please subscribe to my channel.